Seated Good Morning Weighted to Target. The Seated Good Morning to Target is a fantastic exercise for measuring and increasing the flexibility of the Seated Good Morning. When training for strength, we often measure progress by the amount of weight lifted. But measuring flexibility gains can sometimes be a little less obvious. This is where using a target to measure your progress can help. When performing seated good mornings, you want to focus on developing the full range of motion before you start increasing the weight. Can you maintain a flat back and get your chest to touch the bench? To accomplish this, you need to choose a weight that helps you move into a deeper range of motion. If the weight is too light, it won't push you into a new range. If the weight is too heavy, the body's natural response is to hold muscle tension and decrease the range of motion. This is a protective mechanism that prevents injury. You will need to find the Goldilocks of weights that allows you to find the deepest range of motion available to you. Seated good mornings can be performed with a dumbbell, a weight plate or a barbell. While developing the flexibility, I suggest working with roughly 10 to 35 kilograms. To perform the seated good morning to target, you want to sit on an elevated surface that places the thighs parallel to the floor. Sitting on a slightly lower surface is okay, but the lower you go, the greater the flexibility demands. When setting up for the seated good morning, you want to sit on your hip bones and set a slight anterior pelvic tilt, APT. Notice that the torso is not upright, there is a slight forward lean. Often when we sit upright, we lose the APT, so it's best to maintain a slight forward lean at the top of each repetition. You also want to build a target on the bench which you can touch your chest to. A stack of yoga blocks, weight plates or ab mats is a good option. As flexibility increases, you need to be able to decrease the height of the target gradually, hence the stack. Bend your knees to 90 degrees and place your feet flat on the floor, outside shoulder width. You want to create enough space for the hips to move and for the torso to fit between the thighs as you hinge. If the feet are too close together, getting your chest to the bench is impossible. By bending the knees, you'll decrease the tension in the hamstrings and adductors and allow the hips to move into a greater range of APT. At the start of the rep, try to lengthen the spine and maintain a flat back as you move. As you hinge at the hips and allow the shoulders to move forward and down, Imagine pushing your butt back as if trying to slide the butt along the elevated surface. The butt will not move, but the intention will help you tilt the pelvis forward and find more range of motion. As you lean the shoulders forward and down, use your glutes to pull the knees out to the side. Continue to lower down until you touch your chest to the target. As mobility improves, you can start to lower the target and move into a greater range of motion. This allows you to measure your progress from rep to rep, set to set, week to week and more. It's also a great way to maintain consistency in each repetition. Step by step, the range of motion will increase and you'll eventually get your chest to the bench. You want to maintain a flat back or have only the slightest amount of thoracic rounding at the bottom of the rep when the chest touches the bench. Once you've touched your chest to the target, reverse the movement and return to the starting position with a slightly forward torso lean to maintain the APT. Performing three to four sets of eight to 12 repetitions is an excellent starting place for most people. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.